Assalamu alaikum. Peace be yours. Uh, I'd like to begin by saying I'm going to try to condense my ideas. Uh, thank God this is not a very scorch hot day. Uh, but still, some of us are fasting. Others have to drive a distance back home. And so, with your permission, I will try to abbreviate my thoughts. And I just ask you to tune in. There's a tendency sometimes to wither off in some direction when someone's speaking. I just want to hold your attention for the 10, 15, or 20 minutes that I have so that I can make these points. And I'm going to be very frank, and if I step on someone's nerves, uh, I'm subject to correction. If I'm wrong, you come up to me after my word, and you correct me. Uh, no one is infallible here. We're speaking about the issue of Palestine, or the Holy Land, or the colonization of, of Palestine. I want to go a step further and go beyond the ma mass media and jump over the word occupation and dare call it colonization. We are dealing with a colonization of the Holy Land by war criminals and by those who are committing crimes against humanity. This is not an occupation. This is a colonization. And many countries in the world got rid of their colonial administrations and it's the time is coming when the world has to get rid of the Zionist colonization of the Holy Land. That's number one. Number two, justice is a concept that is not a monopoly of any religion or any ideology. Justice is a norm that can be identified by anyone belonging to any ideology or belonging to any religion. Justice stands on its own. And if there is an ideology, whether it's racist or Zionist or imperialist or whatever its nature, if there's any such ideology that stands between you and the acknowledgement of justice, you have to know something is wrong. Number three, there has to come a time in the near future, tomorrow, next year, the next generation, there has to come a time, and it is coming, when we can stand up in this country. All of us are citizens or legal residents of this country. That moment has to come when we can say with confidence and in the honor of justice that there has to be a dis-Israelization of this government here in Washington, D.C. That moment has to approach. Why is any, why, why are people afraid to say this? The first step in the right direction is to voice and to articulate this truth. This government here on Capitol Hill, in the executive, wherever it is, this government has to be freed of the Zionist control over it. Now these may be words coming from the future, but it's long overdue for you and me to acknowledge this has to happen. And don't call anyone a Muslim terrorist, or a radical, or an insurrectionist, or a troublemaker, or whatever you want to call them. Don't call anyone that because they see and they know that this government here is controlled by Zionists. Why can't anyone say this in public? 
course, you're not going to be invited to CNN, the mainstream media, and these other places. The heck with them. They're going out of currency anyways. In the last year, the war criminals in Tel Aviv and all of that hierarchy and the echelons there, they prosecuted 700 Palestinian children. They physically abused three out of four of those children. Now you heard in the previous presentations, you heard how vile that regime is in, of all places, God's holy land on earth. I would like to penetrate a little into the conscience of those who say that they are Muslims and those who say that they are Christians and those who say that they are Jews. I'd like to penetrate for one moment inside your conscience, wherever you may be, to ask you sincerely, how do you agree with the atrocities and the war crimes and the crimes against humanity that are committed systematically in the Holy Land? If you agree with that, you need to be examined. USA this is also a subject matter that stays off the public radar. USAID, officially now, forget about other channels, officially, the US government, since the colonization of the Holy Land by the Zionists, the US government has given that criminal regime $150 billion. Recently, someone made the remark that the U.S. is paying Israel, officially, on the records, $3.1 billion a year. Here, take it. It's yours. That's our tax money. And that figure stands to be corrected. It was, in previous years, $3.1 billion. Now, it's $3.8 billion. And we're not speaking about the charities and the donations and whatever else money is funneled in to that killer regime. We have a president now in the White House who has capitulated. Let me tell you this president. This president has a daughter who is Muslim. A son-in-law who is Muslim. Another son who became a Muslim. All of these became Muslims. Now you know that's not correct. None of those are Muslims. But imagine, when Obama was president, these types now, who are in control of the government, they made a big issue that Obama is a closet Muslim. That Obama was born in Kenya that Obama is this and Obama is that. The poor man was trying to do his job the best he could given the chains and the whatever was around him. This person comes out in your face and he endorses everything the Zionists want him to endorse. Bar nothing. And we're supposed to be looking the other way. Nothing is happening. They're planning a war, and we're supposed to believe nothing is happening. He's cutting aid. He's giving the Israelis the money that they want. It's a shame that the Zionists have stolen the word Israel and sort of monopolized it and are forcing us to say Israel. Be that as it is, he's cutting from UNRWA, that's the United Nations Relief Organization that is running schools for these poor orphan Palestinians. He chopped off, I don't know, $65 million from their budget. He chopped off around $200 million from the Palestinian Authority. These are the ones that were towing the line. 
And that's not enough for his Zionist bosses. They want more. You, genuflect, you genuflect for them, they're not satisfied. They want you to prostate for them. Furthermore, he goes and he cuts off $900 million to Pakistan. He's showing us his true colors and these are obvious signals of what is to come in the years that he's supposed to be ruled. The Palestinians are suffering from home demolitions, arbitrary arrests, detentions, revocation of residency. They're treated like, I mean, this is the problem. I, I don't want to get, as I said, I, I sincerely admire every observant Jew, Christian, and Muslim. Because in this context, we have our problem. Don't think that Zionism is only a Jewish problem. Zionism is a Christian problem, and Zionism is a Muslim problem. We have Christian Zionists, we have Muslim Zionists, in addition to the Jewish Zionists. Now we use these religious words because they use them. We don't want to act, we, they're Zionists. We don't need a hyphenated type of Zionist. A Zionist is a Zionist. It has nothing to do with Islam or Christianity or Judaism. Israel's high court gives permission to the Shin Bet, that's their internal intelligence agency that goes out and does what it does in the street, in, in Palestinian areas, cities, towns, villages, gave them the green light to continue with their torture techniques that they've been using against the Palestinians. This anomaly holy land wants to forcibly eject people who came from Africa now, this leads racism is a very ugly thing you may know where it begins but you'll never know where it ends some of these Africans they came to Israel seeking asylum or job opportunities some of them came as Jews coming back to Zion. And now, it doesn't matter what they came for or how they came or what their purpose was, they have to be expelled. Now, anyone who cannot see that this is blatant Zionism needs to have their vision checked. The Zionist lobby in this country is very strong, probably the strongest lobby in this government. APAC is strong, probably stronger than what is called the Israeli Defense Force, and probably stronger than Mossad, and probably stronger than the regime over there, and all of that structure combined. Yet, being what it is, you, you see American officials and politicians going to pay their homage to this Israeli lobby in this country every year in March. At the beginning of March, they assemble here in Washington, D.C. And look at these politicians. We have cycles of elections over here, and we should, in whichever way possible, have our influence in these cycles of election and make these poodles of Zionism on Capitol Hill understand that we are people and we count. They can't get away with wars. What are these wars going on all over the world? The U.S. has military bases all around the world in the hundreds. What are they doing? The military itself, military personnel are sick and tired of these wars. They're draining the economy. And because of that, the politicians over here are eyeing the economies and the budgets and the treasuries of the oil-rich states in the Muslim East. And all of this is happening while some of us are watching. This is entertainment to some people on TV. 
until it strikes home. Israel is an apartheid state. Once I was on one of the campuses on the West Coast, and uh, after I gave my two cent presentation as it was, a person in the audience, just like you were standing there, he said, uh, well, I hear that you're against Israel, that you're against Zionism and all of this. And you mentioned apartheid in your presentation. And I said, yeah, so what, what, do you have any issues with that? Any problems with that? He said, yeah, Israel is not an apartheid state. I happen to have gone to South Africa during the time of apartheid. And I know how the South African people lived if they were not of a certain race. I lived with that. I know it. Of course, I haven't been to colonized Palestine, but from the friends and from reliable sources and from independent media, you know, anyone should know, that the comparison between apartheid Israel and apartheid South Africa miniaturizes apartheid South Africa. In apartheid Israel, Palestinians are not allowed to drive if they want to go a distance of a few miles. They have to go in a roundabout way and, and instead of going there in 10 minutes or 15 minutes, they have to spend two hours to get to their destination. There's a wall right now that it has been erected between the Zionist racists and the oppressed Palestinians. There was no wall in South Africa. I mean a physical war, wall. There were legal walls all over the place. But there was no physical war as such. And then, what do you want to express in the best possible? Look, we can speak about this issue very brotherly, very open-mindedly, and very open-heartedly. It's easy to do it. There shouldn't be any tension or any agitation or anyone burning their nerves when they speak about this issue. It's plain and simple. Can't you see what is happening? A final note, and that is, the Palestinians are never, not that I like what I'm gonna say, but my mind tells me, as well as my heart, the Palestinians and everyone on that side of the issue will never be able to acquire the military technology and know-how and wherewithal that the Zionist, racist colonists have. Never! So someone's going to ask, well, how are they going to be successful? They are going to be successful because they are fighting for justice and their rights. And when you fight on principle for justice and your right, you will be victorious. And the narrative of David and Goliath spells it out very well. And this is the narrative that we are living and hopefully in the coming year or in the coming years we can assemble those of us who have it within their reach. We will be able to assemble in El Quds, Jerusalem. It's not going to be a cakewalk. The forces are already juxtaposed and the warmongers here, the neoconservatives right now who are in charge of policies, they are planning for war, but they're going to lose. They're going, never has there been in history, they, they, don't even, they haven't even studied history, never has there been in history a country from one part of the world that went to another part of the world, started a war, and stayed there in a victorious way. You present to me one incident 
in which that happened, which we are living with today in today's world. Never. Of course, there's been military campaigns all over the map. But never has been, there been a military campaign of a war, of aggression, that has been perpetuated and has become the status quo. Never! And if it never happened in history, it will never happen into the future. What we are living with now is an anomaly, and the Zionist colonists, co the colonial force in the Holy Land, shall be dislodged. We prefer it be dislodged peacefully. But they don't prefer it that way. They're going to force us to dislodge it in every other means barring peace. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.